Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Top Tips for Balancing Work, Play, and Study. My name is Fiona, and I'll be facilitating today's webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. The webinar will last for approximately 45 minutes. All attendees are on mute, so the only voices you should hear throughout the webinar will be mine and the presenters. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the chat box of the control panel. You can send these questions in at any time during the presentation and we'll collect them and address as many as we can during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. I would now like to introduce Red Barrington. Red Barrington is an experienced digital marketer with over 15 years practice leading digital strategy and implementation of enterprise level digital projects throughout her boutique agency, Red Star Digital. As a chartered mar marketer, Red has also worked with the Oxford College of Marketing, teaching CIM qualifications and providing student support. This afternoon, she'll be sharing top tips for balancing work and other commitments while studying for a CIM qualification. So without delay, I'll hand you over to Red. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today on this webinar. So today's agenda, we're just going to first of all start by looking uh, a little bit about you. I'd like to get to know you guys a little bit better. We're going to focus on studying while, work, uh, so while working, how CIM can support your studies, some tips for balancing work and study, looking at a few case studies and what perhaps you can learn from that, as well as taking your questions as well. So as the presenter, uh, as the introducer suggested, you know, if you have questions as we move through, please type them into that chat area and we'll collect them and I'll be happy to take any questions at the end as well. So, without further delay, let's learn a bit more about you. So, I believe the um, host is going to put some polls open. So, if you just have a look at that poll and then answer, those, answer that particular question, we we'll, uh, can have a look at the answers then. Give it a few more moments to enable you to uh, add in your results. So you should be able to see the results now. Okay, so we can see here it's uh, mostly four to ten years in terms of practice. I think we've got another poll as well. We all like a good poll, so uh, we're just going to share another one. Again, just if you just put, uh, select your answer, so we can get, get to know you a little bit more. Right, so let's see those polling results then. So as you can see on the screen now, you should be able to see uh, the results. I can see here most of you are studying part-time, so probably you are particularly interested in this and how you can achieve that balance between studying, uh, work, and also life as well. Okay. So let's start moving through this particular webinar today. So I'll give you a brief uh, overview about myself. Uh, my name's Red Barrington, and I'm a lead tutor at the Oxford College of Marketing, which is an accredited CIM study centre. Uh, I've got 15 years' experience uh, leading uh, digital marketing projects and strategy. My, uh, my working career has always been working in digital. Um, I've worked with brands such as Vodafone, I've worked with brands such as Dell, Sainsbury's, as well as a range of digital startups and leading education institutes. Uh, after I completed my CIM postgraduate diploma, I undertook a master's in marketing and started working with the Oxford College of Marketing. Uh, I've worked with them for over 10 years. Uh, I've taught across all the different various uh, qualifications and qualification levels. Uh, I support students with their assessments, their exam preparations, and I also undertake in-classroom teaching too. I develop some of our course materials and um, for sort of digital qualifications, and I also develop uh, wider training courses for corporate organisations as well. And I'm also a chartered marketer. I'd like to think, actually, through doing my own um, postgraduate diploma and also studying for a master's, I kind of know what it's like and how it feels 
uh, to be trying to study and juggling work and juggling your life all at the same time. So as I've suggested before, studying while working can be a significant challenge. Uh, you've not just got uh, your day job, so your day job with its workload and various responsibilities. You might have family commitments. Some of you may have children, younger children, older children. You might have other out-of-work commitments as well. You may even have a sort of perhaps lack of space to study. You might be sharing a room or sharing a property with somebody. But actually, with trying to study and work at the same time, it's all about achieving a right balance. Now, I know how tough it can be you know, uh, to, to work and to study at the same time without even adding in complexities of families or friends or life. So I'm hoping today we're going to be able to break this down a little bit more and give you some guidance as to how you can complete your CIM qualification you know, while having other commitments as well, such as work and such perhaps as family, uh, life, etc. So perhaps this is the um, question that we get asked the most as a study centre. How long is it going to take me to undertake my qualification? Um, so really how long it will take will depend on what level you choose to study. So you may be aware that the CIM have different qualifications to suit different levels of experience in marketing. So on this slide here, what I'm uh, showing to you is the different uh, qualifications that are available. So for example, the foundation certificate in marketing, this is ideal for managers in non-marketing functions or perhaps apprentices or entrepreneurs. So those who are starting out in their uh, marketing career. Whereas the, whereas the certificate in professional marketing is designed for those who are working in marketing support roles, so perhaps those who are working as marketing assistants, or perhaps whose uh, current job en encompasses elements of marketing, but they're not entirely working in the marketing function. The diploma in professional marketing, that takes a more strategic view of marketing, is probably suited to more departmental managers, uh, functional managers, product managers perhaps, uh, business development managers, and finally, that postgraduate um, and diploma is, is for experienced marketers and senior business people who want to gain that professional qualification while working at a strategic level. So as you can see from this slide that I've got here, each of the qualifications are made up of several modules and uh, the assessments are made uh, from a mixture of assignments and examination uh, methods. So, um, and you can also, what I've added here, is the minimum length of time to complete. So the foundation level, as it's only two modules, it will take six months we, uh, roughly to complete. This is for the minimum length to complete. A certificate uh, and diploma around one year, and that postgraduate diploma uh, a year and a half, approximately. But in terms of um, what's included when you're studying for your qualification, and also perhaps how long it takes, depends on your study route. So whether you decide, perhaps, you want to sort of study via distance learning, so not going into a classroom at all, or whether you want to take a blended learning approach, perhaps a mixture of in-classroom learning and distance learning, or you want to study through part-time evening. But generally, in terms of what will encompass your studying, it will involve some time with your tutor, so that could be discussing uh, an assignment or perhaps receiving feedback. A lot of the um, study centres will offer you some form of personal tutor that you can work with or a, a contact that you can work with through your assessments uh, or preparing, preparing for your examination. Uh, some of that other time will also involve face-to-face -face teaching if you choose a part-time evening or blended route, or it will include some virtual learning, perhaps through webinars, for example. Um, also, your study time, it will include self-study time. So this will include perhaps accessing course materials, reading the recommended text or journals or articles. And also, and most significantly, uh, your study time will be working on your assessment or perhaps working on exam revision and practice. Um, it is worth noting that each, uh, each assessment method will require a particularly different approach to studying. So for example, assignments you will often complete alongside perhaps your module learning, while examinations will involve revision and exam practice towards the end of that particular, mo um, particular module. Your study centre, though, can advise you on uh, further on what weekly activities should involve and, and you know, what you should be doing week to week and helping you break those activities down. However, in terms of how long it will take and how long you need to spend perhaps studying, we often advise students around 10 hours a week, which could also include your face-to-face -face teaching. So if you think of breaking that down, um, actually you, that could be perhaps one Sunday afternoon and one evening in the week. So it can make ma studying quite manageable. 
The CIM um, are also, though, here to support your learning and your growth as a marketer. And what I've done here in this particular slide is outline some of the key areas in terms of how they can support uh, and offer you support uh, in, in um, managing, working, and studying together. So first of all, uh, there's a variety of learning methods. So they're designed to sort of suit you and to suit your needs. Um, you can choose to study online through distance learning, face-to-face -face in the classroom, or you can have that uh, blend of both. It's, you know, if you're not sure perhaps of your best, which is the one for you, do speak to your study centre because they'll be able to offer you some advice. Different study centres will offer different learning routes as well. Another and perhaps key uh, support uh, way that CIM can support you is through this bite-sized learning. And, bite-sized modules. So they've created these bite-sized marketing modules that are designed to fit around your lifestyle. So you can study one marketing module at a time and build up your to a full qualification at your own pace. So I'm going to provide you with an example on the next slide and shortly, but that's a really important consideration that you know it's not if you need to take a break, you can, and there's some real flexibility around with this bite-sized learning approach. Um, CIM also offers flexible assessments. So there are three assessment boards a year, uh, December, April, June, uh, sort of going into July, so it's always usually the end of June. And this gives you sort of flexibility perhaps when you decide to sit your assessment, but also perhaps if your circumstances change, it's, it's relatively easy to adjust and adjust your study timetable and adjust your assessment timetable as well. So there is flexibility within that. You know, I think the key thing is your study center and the CIM do understand that it, it, it's hard to strike this balance between working and studying. Sometimes things just get in the way and you need perhaps a bit more flexibility. And perhaps one of the key things that the CIM um, and can support you in your learning is through my CIM resources. Uh, this is quite impressive, actually, as a CIM studying member. You get a whole host of free online resource, uh, resources to support your studies. So these include journals from EBSCO and Emerald databases, industry reports from Keynote and Mintel. You also get free access to the CIM's latest research, uh, previous research that they might have undertaken. Um, you also uh, get access, perhaps more importantly, to free marketing texts that you can read online. Uh, these include uh, key texts from marketing, communications, and digital. They're all available to you uh, to access for free, and they will certainly assist in your studies and really help you. So there's no delay in waiting for Amazon, perhaps, to deliver your books. You can get on with that reading as soon as you're a studying member. Okay, so as I suggested, here's an example of how the bite-sized approach could work. So this is from the CIM Diploma in Professional Marketing. So um, each module uh, essentially can be achieved as a distinct self-contained award, which then can be built up to attain the diploma. So I'm just going to um, underline this here, Ooh, if I can. So let's say we take the uh, this one here, the digital strategy module. Perhaps we decide to undertake that particular module and we successfully complete the assessment, which is through assignment, and then you would gain that award in digital strategy. But actually then we decide, well, we, we quite enjoyed that module and we want to complete the rest of the professional, uh, sorry, the diploma in professional marketing. In that instance, we then need to complete further two modules, which are the two here, which are the mandatory modules. This would be strategic marketing and mastering metrics, one assessed by exam and one assessed by assignment. So what's quite good, um, as I suggested, is that you, know, you can start with one particular module, see how you get on, you, you still get an award, and if you want to complete the full then diploma or the full qualification, you can then choose to do that. So it's a nice, flexible, bite-sized approach there. Okay, so what about some top tips then for how you can balance work, play, and study? Here's some of the tips that you know I really often give my students when they, are tr when they first start uh, undertaking their CIM qualification. I think perhaps the most important thing is um, when you undertake a qualification that you are able to schedule regular study time. So this will really ensure that you break up your learning down into sort of manageable chunks and you don't really end up being overwhelmed. Um, when, and when you're scheduling that time, just think about you know, when's the best time for you to studying, knowing about your circumstances perhaps, um, 
you know, how you are, perhaps in the evenings, or what family commitments you might have. When's the best time for you to study? Is it in the evening? Is it at the weekend? Is it perhaps during your commute? And another thing when you're thinking about scheduling study time, you know, make sure you communicate that time perhaps to your family, loved ones, it could even be to colleagues at work if you plan to do a little bit even in your lunch hour. Make sure you're communicating that so you can get supported, you can get encouraged, and also perhaps you might not get disturbed. Another tip is about planning. So once you've scheduled your time, you need to make sure you've got a plan. So what are you going to, uh, you know, what are you going to get completed in your study time? One of the recommendations I always make to students is when you're starting out and studying, make sure you understand your own learning style. So there's some really good free online tests that can help you identify your own learning style. So what type of learner are you? And this makes you um, make sure that you can plan your study time much more effectively and you can maximize that study time if you better understand how you learn and the best way for yourself to learn as well. I mean, planning also um, really is so much more important when it comes to your assessments because planning time to work on your assignments, so to meet deadlines, but also revision for exams is absolutely crucial. So therefore, it's really helpful to split your time up into smaller chunks and into smaller tasks. So you're not leaving things to the last minute and you're not risking yourself perhaps being overwhelmed. It is true, some students do underestimate the time they need to spend on their assessment. So planning your time is vital to achieve that good balance. But ultimately, you know, your study center, they can really help provide you with guidance and advice on how to perhaps divide your time up for your assessment. Now, don't forget to plan around holidays or perhaps busy, busy periods at work or when you might have an annual conference at work or, or something similar. Make sure you're really planning your time and you're sticking to that um, uh, plan as well. Your study centre will be able to provide you with guidance on how to plan and divide your time. Some of them will also help uh, you put together your study plans too. We certainly do for our students. Um, and we put personalised study plans together based on their learning needs. But most study centres will help you in terms of putting that uh, guidance and plan together. Now another great tip uh, to help you studying while working and perhaps giving that balance as well is thinking about how you can maximize perhaps otherwise wasted time. So one key thing is for those of you that perhaps commute is an, it's an ideal opportunity for you to, to use this to devote this time to your studies. So perhaps when using public transport, you could use that time to read some of your course notes, perhaps any uh, the CIM textbooks, um, or you could also use that time to listen to podcasts. So many of our students download their podcasts, their modules, and listen to them on the move, when they're on, even when they're in their uh, daily commute in their car. So use that opportunity wisely that you may have some dead time where you're sat for an hour on a train every day. Think about perhaps you, could you read a small chapter in a book? Uh, could you uh, go back through your course notes for a particular session? Could you use that time to proofread your assignment? So again, that will really help you maximize the time you've got available, but also leave you additional time for other things such as perhaps having relaxation time, etc. It is, it can be difficult, you know, in balancing study, work, and play. So it's really important that you keep yourself motivated wherever you possibly can. And um, motivation can be so hard when you're trying to study, especially you know, it's 25 degrees outside, everyone's in the garden having a picnic or a barbecue, and you're sat in there trying to finish off your assignment. But you know, make sure you, you know, remember the, your, the reasons why uh, and motivate yourself to think why you're undertaking your studies. What are you going to gain from completing them? You know, how you perhaps enhance your career, how you're going to enhance your future prospects. Always keep that in the back of your mind. But also think about rewarding yourself for completing smaller goals as well. So it could be perhaps a, a night out for completing your assignment draft, or even just maybe a bar of chocolate for completing you know, your required reading of, uh, for that particular evening or that particular day. It's really important you keep yourself motivated throughout your studies, and that will really help you achieve the balance and make sure you're, you know, you're not feeling such, uh, maybe um, uh, too much of a slave to your studies, which you definitely shouldn't be. You should be enjoying your studies and really feeling the benefit of them. Perhaps the most important thing, though, in terms of tips uh, that I can possibly give anybody in terms of their, um, uh, in terms of their studying and achieving uh, the balance between work and life and studying is saving time for relaxation. 
it's so important that you put time aside to relax. You have regular downtime and you do things you enjoy at regular intervals. It's really important. So if it is, as you can see on the slide, some yoga, relaxation, that's brilliant. Or it might just be spending the afternoon with friends, spending the afternoon with family. Make sure you put that time aside um, within your plans um, because that's important as well. Very, very important. Okay, but, but what happens though if perhaps things don't go according to plan? So I've listed here some of the issues that students may have when trying to balance uh, working and studying uh, and playing. So for example, I, I'm, studying, I'm, I'm struggling to find time to study. You know, what if I, you know, I, I leave or change jobs? What if I'm halfway through my assignment, my workload increases dramatically? You know, what am I going to do? Uh, what if I feel overwhelmed and what if I have a personal emergency? If your circumstances change, there are so, and there are plenty of options open to you, uh, you know, in terms of perhaps pausing your studies or delaying your assessment. Um, the CIM have developed their qualifications to be flexible, and your study centre will be able to advise you of the best route for your, uh, based on your circumstances. Um, you know, remember studying while it might be challenging, it needs to be and it should be enjoyable. So if you are feeling overwhelmed, then again, speak to your study centre. They are there to help you. They can offer you lots of advice. You know, they, they've got lots of experience in helping students in a whole host of different circumstances achieve their qualification. So, you know, if you do feel, uh, if, you, if you do feel this in any instance, you know, do remember that that's what your study centres are there for. And ultimately, the CIM are there as well uh, in the background to help you too. Okay. Let's have a look now at some of the case studies of students who've studied with us and, and, and how they've found perhaps balancing studying, working uh, and life too. So the first student I wanted to speak to you about is a chap called Meza and he completed his professional, um, his diploma, sorry, in professional marketing with us and since then has completed a further qualification and also gained his charge of marketer status. He's actually, uh, Meza's a father of two and one was born actually just after a CIM exam. He studied with us for three years to complete his diploma, both by uh, part-time evening and also via distance learning. Um, and he did this while balancing um, a developing agency career, but also uh, supporting his growing family as well. When I spoke to Meza, he sort of said that he found that you know CIM qualification is challenging, but ultimately very rewarding. He found that Distance learning required a lot of self-discipline and motivation and that perhaps part-time evening classes enabled him to focus a little bit more and that in added interactions really suited his uh, learning style a little bit better than perhaps distance learning did. He's actually just handed in his um, final assessment um, for uh, his second qualification. And he said, you know, it's been hard work, but it's been absolutely worth it and he's now looking forward to actually starting a new life in Australia. So Mez is really hoping that his studies put him in really good stead in Australia, the fact that he's taken two qualifications and he's a chartered marketer and then he's looking for a, a, for a new job. But ultimately what really what was quite interesting about this is that you know he had a growing family, a very young family, but he still managed to achieve that balance and actually uh, he felt the benefit of doing not only doing one qualification but then went on to do another and achieve his chartered marketer status. Mezzer actually recently spoke at the CIM Northern Conference as well, so he's been very busy uh, and he has managed to achieve that balance. Another student we've got here is uh, Moreau Snow and um, she completed her certificate in professional marketing via distance learning uh, with us and she's since gone on to study two further digital qualifications with us as well. And when I spoke to Moreau about um, uh, studying and uh, how she felt about it uh, and distance learning especially, she said she did find you know, the initial challenge, uh, it was quite it was quite difficult to balance her job uh, with her studies to start with, but actually she got into a routine, she put time aside, she planned her time well, and found that the flexibility of distance learning benefited her because it enabled her to learn at her own pace. Um, and despite distance learning, actually she felt that she was able to regularly keep in touch with her fellow students and also tutors via email, social media, uh, the forums that we offer, and also uh, through a range of webinars that are provided too. Um, she also had regular contact with her personal assessment tutor. Um, and actually, when I was speaking to her about distance learning um, uh, and, and how uh, she could uh, sort of 
what she felt about distance learning. She said, as long as you know, you're motivated and you're determined you're, to get your qualification, she felt that anybody could do it. So these cases are quite interesting. They're two very different ones, sort of a, a, a younger, a younger um, uh, lady who you know, did it by distance learning. And we also had a, 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 perhaps a family man who was studying by a part-time evening. Um, but both have suggested that actually it is, it is possible to achieve that balance, but it's all about planning your time and motivating yourself as well. Okay. Oh, I think I'm missing a slide there. So, so actually, in terms, if you are interested in undertaking a uh, or thinking about undertaking a CIM qualification, um, the next step is to find yourself a study centre. So, if you go to the URL that is listed here, uh, simply uh, go to that URL and put in the information and details that um, and your details, uh, and they'll help you find the right study centre. That was a real brief overview in terms of how you can balance uh, your uh, studies, work, and play to achieve your CIM qualification. I'll be really happy to take any of your questions that you might have today in the final 15 minutes. That's great. Thanks very much, Red. Um, we're now going to answer some of the questions that have been submitted during today's presentation. Um, and as a reminder, you can still submit your questions via the chat box in the attendee control panel. Right, Red, our first question comes from Carol, who um, is looking to know, where can I do the online test to establish what kind of learner I am? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, there is such a whole host of them. I don't usually publicize one, um, but there are lots and lots of them that, that are available. Um, I'm just going to double check, actually. I want to make sure I give the right URL, if that's okay, if you're okay, just to pause for one second, um, one second, I'm just going to make sure I've uh, got this up correctly. Uh, there's one called educationplanner.org and actually within there they've got a learning style quiz and that's one that I often recommend to my students. So that's, that's a website to go and have a look at and look at their uh, learning style quiz there. Okay, great. Um, Verity was asking, do you have any advice for someone struggling with concentration? Uh, she's been always a very good reader, but lately finding it difficult to focus. Oh, okay. Depends, Verity, on whether you've got the TV on in the background and the radio, etc. Um, one thing, actually, I often do, um, I have to do a lot of reading as part of my day job and also as part of my role with supporting students. I have to do a lot of reading. Uh, CIM do like to... Um, uh, send me, well not send me, but uh, we have lots of books that we have to read as tutors and make sure we step to date with things. I often take myself off for a walk uh, without my mobile phone. I always leave my mobile phone behind. Don't, don't go too far, obviously just in case something happens to you, but I go for a walk or I sit in the garden and I have my book with me so I don't get distracted by the things around me. And I actually, you know, mobile phones have a lot to answer for in terms of distraction. So try go somewhere without the mobile device, go somewhere quiet like the garden or the park and just sit and do your reading there. That can often be really really helpful in, in helping you focus and concentrate um, as well. Uh, the, the least amount of distractions, the better. So uh, libraries are also really good if you need to um, uh, do some uh, you need to do some revision, perhaps, or some writing of your assignment. Again, you can't really use a mobile device in the library, so uh, think about that. that. That's often a good place to go to. That's great. Um, Sharon was asking, uh, she's halfway through the certificate level, can she complete the assessment at a different study centre? Uh, yes, you can, uh, Sharon. Uh, I, you have that flexibility uh, within your assessment, you don't have to stay with your same study centre. Um, uh, I also just just bear in mind how you might have paid for uh, you, you might have paid for your um, studying. So if you paid for all your studying up front, obviously you'll need to speak to your current study centre. Perhaps if you decided you wanted to leave, but if you're paying sort of module by module, then absolutely you've got the flexibility to change to a different study centre. Um, and again, that which is which is quite nice. So perhaps if you do move, or if you uh, move away, or you move to a different area, or your circumstances change, you have that flexibility as well. Thanks, Red. Do you think an employer should allow you some study time? And if so, how would you go about asking for it? That's from Jackie. 
Oh, that's a really good question, Jackie. Um, we we often get that quite asked quite a lot as well. Um, especially those who employers who um, are funding or supporting uh, your studies and are absolutely. Uh, you should certainly um, go and ask them if they're actively supporting you or maybe uh, giving you financial contribution towards your studies because um, that will ultimately benefit them as well in terms of you achieving the goals that they're in the training that they're helping you with. Um, if you are self-supporting yourself, um, I think um, I think it's, uh, employers uh, are pro usually very pleased to hear that you are trying to develop your own skill sets. So if you go and speak to your manager, um, maybe you want to speak to the HR team as well and say that I'm undertaking this as part of my own personal development, I really would appreciate some study time. Um, is there any possibility of having just a few hours a week to complete some personal study? Remember, you need to, just like just like uh, in, in your day job, it's about presenting a sort of cost-benefit analysis to them and sort of saying, well, you know, what's the key benefit? Um, uh, of them allowing you this study time, the fact you know if you, what happens if you achieve and get your goal, you know, you'll be a better, you'll be a better marketer, you'll be able to do, um, what, what you'll be adding to the business, for example. So if you give it to them in those sorts of terms, um, then I think they certainly will um, support you. So it's really just about going and asking and putting it in a way that that reflects that it will benefit the business, and I think that would be my my key advice. Okay, good advice there. Um, do you have any tips for motivating yourself other than the rewards of the qualification, especially for someone who doesn't work in marketing who is trying to complete a marketing certificate from Anushka? Gosh, so how else could you motivate yourself apart from just achieving that? Um, I think it's also not just about getting the qualification, but thinking about you know furthering your career. Um, you know, it's all about self motivation. So you know, what does you have to think about what motivates you? Um, and you must there must be a reason why you undertook that, that particular qualification in the first place. And you have to remind yourself why you're doing this qualification, and that should hopefully motivate you. But I always I always believe in setting yourself. Um, little, you know, little rewards along the way. So, once I complete you know, this particular aspect, then I will give myself this. If I complete this, I will, um, I will reward myself with this. You know, if I complete my assignment by the, you know, the required deadline, I'm, you know, I'm going to have a whole day off and, I don't know, go to the seaside. Um, it's, it, it, it's really about rewarding yourself and setting yourself milestones, rewarding yourself when you achieve those milestones. I think that can also help motivate yourself too. Um, okay, so what if I miss an assessment or cannot make the date? That's from Anna. Okay, um, so yes, uh, I understand life happens, things happen, um, there are challenges along the way, circumstances change. So there is some flexibility with your um, uh, assessments. The CIM do enable you to, um, if let's say you've um, booked your uh, assessment, and then actually something unfortunately happens and it means you can't complete that. They do offer you a window of opportunity to then um, uh, change, well, essentially change your mind. Um, and you can then decide to um, move those fees to another assessment board. So there is that flexibility. So you don't need to worry. There are deadlines around, around that. Um, and there may, be, uh, there may be other small charges incurred. But there is still flexibility. So you know, please don't, you know, one thing I always say to students is please don't worry. Um, there is always, there's always ways around the, on how we can support you. There's always ways around how we can support you. And, you know, if there are problems, uh, you, know, you know, the CIM are there to help you and your study centre are always there to help you too. So uh, don't worry, there is some flexibility with those deadlines. Um, so, someone's asking, can I take a mixture of distance learning and classroom sessions for different modules? Absolutely. Uh, a lot of our students do that. Um, some students find that um, you know, they start off a part-time evening, get into the swing of things, and then decide later on, actually, I feel okay to, to take the next module by distance learning. Um, there are part Don't forget, there's also blended learning, which is a mixture of intensive weekends and also um, a, a mixture then of distance learning. So you'll, you'll go to a Saturday or a Saturday and Sunday uh, uh, sort of intensive session, and then after that you'll, you'll move to distance learning. So you kind of get a big hit of learning all in one go, um, and you'll cover a lot of information in one weekend, and then you'll go back through your, your own materials and distance learning. So that's quite a good blend that some students prefer. 
But absolutely, you may decide that you want to do one module by one route, and then actually, oh, I've tried distance learning, not sure it works for me, um, I'm now going to try a part-time evening, or vice versa. Um, again, it's really down to you as an individual, but absolutely, your study centre will enable you to do a mix of learning, um, in, just all depending on your own requirements. Great. Helen was just asking, is there any help available to help you decide which is the most appropriate qualification for you? Uh, yes, there is lots of help available. Firstly, your study centre will be the first port of call um, that you can find out what level, but the CIM also do have uh, an online test uh, that's available that you can check what level, you answer a few, essentially answer a few questions, um, and their online testing tool is very useful in determining what level you should be studying at. But generally, um, if you look at the CIM's website, you'll see that there are um, different descriptions for different levels. So you could probably get a feeling for which one you should be doing. But often, um, the, the sort of biggest issue we find, or not issue, sorry, the, the biggest sort of um, question we get asked, should I do the certificate or should I do the diploma? So that's one is, that's, those lines there are certainly blurred, and that's when the CIM online testing tool comes in and is very useful. But also your study centre will have their own internal tools that they can help you in terms of diagnosing what level you should be at uh, and what qualification is best suited to you. So I think it's a mixture of uh, use, uh, um, using that particular online tool, but also um, the study centre. And your study centre that you get in contact with will certainly be able to direct you to that CIM tool as well. And Emma's just asking, what about if you're looking to move jobs? Is it best to wait until a module is completed if possible? Um, absolutely not. I, 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 it, it, I don't think it matters whatsoever. Your assignments are based uh, usually on your uh, organization that you're working for. However, if you move jobs halfway through, I don't think it matters because you still have the knowledge of a previous organization. And then if you've got, a, obviously, a new organization, it gives you a good opportunity to get to know your, your new organization a, 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 as well. I certainly don't think it matters if you move jobs halfway through your assessment at all. Um, I, think, um, I think it's absolutely fine. As long as you're clear on what information you need for your assessment, um, then that's absolutely fine. And I don't think it will disrupt your learning too much. Um, obviously, though, just think about uh, if you are moving jobs, um, that there might be some, you know, you, you might need some additional time or think about uh, how you're going to manage the, the, the time that you're learning about your new job and you know, there might be sort of more requirements of you, you might be particularly busy. So just, just also bear, bear that in mind as well. Okay, great. Um, what would you recommend doing if you're uh, not happy with the lack of contact or response from a tutor? Oh, well, um, well, sorry to hear that you're not getting a response from your tutor. I'm sure that your study centre would be um, quite upset to hear that. That would be, um, that'd be the first thing I'd say. Uh, just get in touch with your study centre directly. Drop them a call. I always think dropping them a phone call rather than an email is better, especially if you're feeling um, you know, uh, particularly upset by that situation. Uh, speak to them. I'm sure um, there's a reason perhaps that your tutor's not been in touch with you um, or uh, there might be a wider issue that you might not be aware of. Just get in touch with your support centre, um, study support um, uh, team um, or your study centre. They will be there to help you. Um, yeah, and they'll be there to help you with answer any further questions and also you know, um, uh, deal with your complaint that you might have. But yeah, that's, that's not great that you're obviously not hearing from your tutors, but you know, just get in touch with your study centre because they'll be able to, do, um, they'll be able to help you further really there. Uh, Sarah was just asking, are there options to spread the cost of the diploma? Um, yes, there are. Again, I, um, it depends on your study centre, but most study centres will provide you um, with a, um, a method of paying um, for uh, by sort of manageable um, chunks as well. So you'll be able to pay by sort of monthly instalments. Um, I know the Oxford Marketing do, and that's interest-free as well. Some other college and other colleges and study centres do exactly the same. So I, I, I'm pretty sure you don't have to pay for it all in one uh, chunk. Uh, it all depends on on the study centre. So do chat to them, uh, and m many of them do have good financial arrangements, uh, whether you are self-studying or whether you're um, uh, being supported by your company. Perfect. So another question, uh, where can I find learning materials to help me with assignments and exams? 
Oh, um, well, if you go back to the um, if you go back through the uh, deck that I've just presented, as a CIM studying member, you've got access to my CIM, and within there, you've got a whole host of resources that are really good for your studies. Um, so that's got all of, uh, sort of EBSCO. It's got Emerald database. They're all journal articles that are really useful. Mintel and Keynote reports. They're great in terms of industry reports. You've got to do a marketing audit. They're brilliant. Um, you've also got uh, um, books, so that you can look at uh, the online versions of books within that as well. So that's the first port of call. And there are a whole host of other resources around the internet that you can utilize as well. Also, oh, one thing I also should say, apologies, is the CIM provide you with uh, assessment podcasts as well, and they're super helpful too. Um, uh, yes, there's also lots of bits and pieces across the internet. Um, those of you, those students that study digital, for example, things like Dave Chappie's Smart Insights website is really, really helpful for students that are studying. Um, gosh, there are so many resources, it's really hard for me to think off the top of my head, but certainly this year I'm with my first port of call. I know study centers sometimes have their own textbooks. They also have their own um, additional resources that you can access as well. So there are, there is probably often, you're a bit spoiled for choice, I often find. Um, one thing I will say is that don't feel you're restricted just to books, especially if you go to study digital marketing. Um, do make sure you look at wider journals. You, um, you know, take advantage of sites, uh, services like Feedly, um, which enable you to capture, um, capture different articles based on topics. So I have Feedly set up for the topic areas I'm interested in, like mobile marketing, email marketing, content marketing. That's a really great way of capturing uh, articles around different areas that especially might be relevant for your assessment and also and also for your day-to-day -day working too. Great, we're running out of time, so we've just got uh, one more question. If you change your exam deadline, do you have to apply again for a new tutor? That's from Andra. Okay, Andra. Um, I'm not sure how your study centre works, um, but in terms of if you decide to move your assessment. Uh, move your assessment entry with the CIM, you will have to apply for the next assessment board when you're ready. You won't automatically be booked onto the next um, uh, assessment board. So do bear that in mind. Your fees will be placed in credit, but you will not necessarily, um, you will, will definitely won't be automatically added to the next assessment board. You'll have to go back and rebook your assessment entry using those fees that may be placed in credit for you. So you will have to essentially apply for an examiner to mark your work again. In terms of whether you get a personal tutor, that's a conversation you need to have with your study centre, um, and that's, that's something that I wouldn't be able to answer for you here today. Okay, that's great. We've just had uh, we've just had one more question in. I find it hard to balance work and study, especially as deadlines are approaching. How can I manage this stress? Okay, so hard to balance work and study with deadline approaches. Um, one thing is, first of all, planning. Certainly plan, 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 plan. Um, and if you're with your deadlines in terms of assessment deadlines, planning is the key here because you need to be breaking down, undertaking your assessment into uh, little chunks because that means you're not going to be in that situation of uh, being a bit overwhelmed when it comes to closer to the deadlines. Um, my advice to students always is try and get your assignment completed or aim to get it completed at least a week before that deadline because then you've got that week as a way to sort of read through it, or worry about printing things off and putting, buying treasury tags and whatever else you need to do for your final assessment. Um, you know, and ultimately also think about if you're really struggling with work and, and, and um, balance studying work, Think about perhaps other options such as using uh, a day of your holiday. I know that's not great, but if you you know if you really are finding it difficult and you're up against it, that's an option uh, if you have that flexibility at work. Also, as we talked about before, think about going and talking to your um, you know your your organisation. See if you can get any study time. You know, present to them and say you know why is it beneficial uh, for them to give you the study time? What is this qualification going to uh, sort of how is it going to benefit them as a business and giving you that extra time? Um, those are some of the options that I recommend. But ultimately, planning is the key to making sure you sort of don't have too much to do uh, and, and, and stressing yourself out um, when balancing work uh, and finishing your assignment. Planning is absolutely the key. That's great. Thank you, Red, and thank you for everyone for attending today's webinar. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for, but if you do have any other questions, please, please feel free to email us at qualifications at 
cim.co.uk. Once you leave today's webinar, you'll receive a survey on the presentation, and we'd appreciate it if you could complete that and provide us your feedback. You'll also receive a follow-up email within the next couple of days with a link to view the recording of today's webinar. Just a reminder that you can find out more about CIM qualifications by visiting our website. On behalf of CIM and RED, thanks, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your afternoon.